Good morning. I am Dr. K. Ashok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, BBRIT, Narsapur. Course name, the subject name, it is Applied Physics. And today's topic, it is Fundamentals of Quantum Physics. So, in previous class, you have seen that matter rules, what are matter rules, and these matter rules that we can perform experimentally the existence of these matter rules. So, by using a, an experiment called Davison and German experiment. So, here we are having that the Davison and German electron diffraction experiment. So, this was first evidence of matter rules was given by the Davison and German in the year 1927. So, this was the the matter waves, the experimental evidence of matter waves was given by the Davison and Germer in the year 1927. And they also succeeded in measuring the de Broglie wavelength associated with the electrons. They have considered the electrons and they have generated these electron beam and based on this one, they have demonstrated that these electrons will be having the, the, the wave nature. And this experimental construction. So here you can see that the construction it is there. So in which it is consisting of the electron beam. So this is the electron beam. So here we are passing this electron beam, and this is generated by the a given the filament. So this is the filament here. This is the filament, tungsten filament we are saying, and it is applied to a high tension voltage and high pressure region. So, if you are applying the high tension voltage and high pressure region, then only electrons will be emitted. So, through this the tungsten filament, this electron beam, it will be emitted. So, this electron beam, it is focused through the an anode. So, this is the anode. So, this anode is giving the that is focusing for this electron beam. So, this electron beam, it will be passing through a nickel target. So, this is the material that we are using here. So, nickel crystal that we are using and this nickel crystal, so it can be rotated. It can be rotated on its axis. So, there is an arrangement will be there and this arrangement will be making this nickel crystal at different angles. So, based on this, the position of this nickel crystal, so the electron beam that is incident onto this nickel crystal, so it will be diffracted. So, this is the diffraction angle. So, this theta value that we can calculate. So, that is, we can calculate this diffraction angle by using a, a circular scale. So, here you can see that the circular scale it is there. So, this is the circular scale and it is in terms of the decrease. So, this circular scale, so this circular scale, it will be measuring the diffraction angle of this electron beam and over this the circular scale, so there is a, a mobile collector is there. So, it is a mobile collector. Mobile means we can move this the collector at any position depending on the this diffraction angle. So, as we change this position of the nickel crystal, that is our target and there is a change in the diffraction angle. So, as it is changing, then we can say we can move the this collector and we can find this the diffraction angle by using this circular scale and we can measure the, the number of electrons entering into this collector. So, in order to measure this, the number of electrons that are entering into this collector, so we are connecting this, the collector into, to a galvanometer. So, this is the galvanometer. So, this galvanometer is used to measure the number of electrons entering into the, this mobile collector. So, this mobile collector, it is a double-walled enclosure. It is a 
a double walled enclosure. So this is a double walled enclosure so that only the fast moving electrons which are coming from the this tungsten filament and it is diffracted at the nickel crystal that is the target and it will be moving towards this collector. So this is a double walled enclosure so which is at an the positive potential field. It is at the positive potential field. So that is if we are applying the positive potential field only then these electrons which are diffracted they will be entered into this collector and how many number of electrons that are entered that can be measured by using the galvanometer. So this is a galvanometer which is used to measure the, the number of electrons that is the current and this whole arrangement it is an evacuator that is we can say it is a the evacuation chamber is arranged. That is, we are saying that the whole arrangement is evacuated because as these are the electron beam, so these electron beams they can travel only in the vacuum chamber. So that we are arranging this in an the vacuum chamber. So this is the construction of this the Davison and German experiment. So once again I repeat that so it is consisting on consisting of an the filament, tungsten filament, you can see that some tungsten filament. So as we are applying the high tension voltage and the high pressure region, the electrons will be emitting out. These electron beam they will be traveling through the anode. So this is the anode and it will be focusing towards this the nickel the crystal. So this is a nickel crystal. So this nickel crystal it will be acting as an, a target. Now as and when it is incident onto this nickel crystal then it will be diffracted. So this diffraction angle that we can measure by using the this circular scale. And so on this circular scale so we will be having the a collector so which is movable. So which is at the positive potential field. So as the electron beam is having the negative charge, these electrons it should be attracted and this collector will be, it will be collecting these electrons and that can be measured, the number of electrons can be measured or the current we can say. So it can be measured by the, by using this galvanometer which is connected towards the, this mobile collector. And the whole arrangement, so it is evacuated, that is it is in the, the evacuation chamber. So because the electrons can move only in the vacuum chamber, in a vacuum. So this is the construction. Now, so here we are saying that the observations are repeated for different, the accelerating potential and at different accelerating potential field, it is observed that a bump being to be appear in the curve. So for 44 volts, so with increase in the potential field, the bump moving towards the upward direction. So the bump becomes most prominent in the curve for 54 volts. That is if you are applying the voltage around 54 volts, then the diffraction angle, say it will be getting the 50 degrees. So theta here it is nothing but the, the diffraction angle and here we can observe that the how the bumps will be there. So you can see from this that is graphical notation. So when the voltage the potential field it is 54 volts. So we are getting a bump like structure and as we are increasing. So here we are increasing to 49 volts and if we are further increased towards 54 and again it is further increased towards the 88 volts. Then if you observe this sequence, so as and when it is increased, the potential field it is increased, the bump, so here you can see that the bump are raised in the, this, the potential field, the amplitude, 
so it is increasing so it will be maximum for an old is the potential field which is equivalent to 54 volts so the same thing that we are writing here that is pump becomes most prominent in the curve for the 54 volts and the diffraction angle so which is equivalent to 50 degrees now for these values of this potential field and we are calculating the the wavelength so we know that so based on the de Broglie equation so we are having an equation that is 12.26 by root v so this 12.26 by root v so in this we are substituting the so v equivalent to 54 volts now we are substituting this value here so v equivalent to 54 volts and we are simplifying that value that is 12.26 by under root 54 then we are getting any that is a result value we are getting lambda equivalent to that is 1.67 angstroms so this is based on the de Broglie equation so based on this de Broglie equation so we have got that is the wavelength of this the electrons here we are considering the, the electrons so as these electrons are generated and they are moving from the cathode the filament and we are getting this wavelength which is equivalent to lambda equivalent to 1.67 angstroms now similarly <coughs> so we are analyzing these the that is the x-ray analysis so it is observed that nickel crystal acts as a that is plane diffraction gradient so because you can see here there is a there will be a diffraction will be there so this diffraction it is due to the the, the diffraction gradient so here you can see that so this is one plane and this is another plane this is another plane so these planes are present in the crystal so these planes will be there in this nickel crystal that is our target and here we are saying it is said to be called the plane diffraction grating and this diffraction grating so they are having the interplanar spacing so that is d equivalent to d 0.91 angstroms we here d is said to be called the interplanar distance between the planes present in the nickel crystal according to this experiment the diffraction the electron beam so theta it is equivalent to it is determined as theta equivalent to 50 degrees now we are taking the the corresponding angle of diffraction so which we will be getting the that is 65 degrees now we know using the Bragg's equation so we know what is a Bragg's equation that is 2d the sine theta equivalent to n lambda and in this equation so we are taking as n equivalent to 1 that is we are considering the first order first order equation and we are considering the that is we have to calculate this lambda and as usual we know that is d is equivalent to that is 0.91 angstroms so that is nothing but it is said to be called the interplanar spacing for the given the target so here the target it is the target crystal it is nothing but the nickel crystal so for this nickel crystal so we have got that d equivalent to 0.91 angstroms and the diffraction angle so we have got the 65 degrees now we are substituting in the de Broglie that is Bragg's equation and we are substituting in this equation and we are simplifying that and here we are getting a lambda equivalent to lambda equivalent to 1.65 angstroms and here this is the lambda value based on the Bragg's equation and based on the de Broglie equation so we have got so lambda equivalent to 1.67 angstroms so these two the wavelengths they are computed and this will be it is nothing but the de Broglie hypothesis so hence the confirm that the de Broglie concept of matter waves so de Broglie concept of matter waves so experimentally we are determining the 
the wavelength of electron beam based on the one equation that we are taken as de Broglie equation so which that we have calculated in the previous slide so you can see that the lambda equivalent to that is we have got 1.67 angstroms and based on the that is Bragg's equation so we have got lambda equivalent to 1.65 angstroms hence we are saying that the concept of matter waves will be existing that is hence we confirm the de Broglie concept of matter waves experimentally we can prove that based on the, the Davison and Germus electron diffraction experiment. Now coming to the next topic, so here we are having the physical significance of the, the wave function. This is the physical significance of the wave function. So here one by one we will be learning what is the significance of this, the physical significance of the wave function. So wave function we are indicating by psi, so this is the psi, has no direct physical meaning. It is a complex quantity representing the variation of the matter waves. We have seen what is matter waves and we are representing in terms of a, that is a mathematical notation, the psi. There, here we are indicating the psi is said to be called the wave function. So this wave function, it connects the particle nature and associated wave nature statistically. So this wave function, so it will be giving the no direct physical meaning. So it is a complex quantity representing the variation of the this matter wave. So sometimes we know it will be acting as a particle nature, it will be acting as a wave nature. This both will be the confirmed by this wave function. And so probability, so probability density function, so we are taking as probability density function. So what is meant by probability density function? So here we are taking a volume, so that we are indicating as in three dimensional dx, dy, dz. And psi, psi star, psi, psi star, dx, dy, dz gives the probability of finding the electron in a given space, in a given space. So here based on this, the wave function, so we are, we can find out this, the, we can find out the probability of finding the, an electron in the region of space. And the third point, if the particle is present, then we can say, it is said to be called normalization function. So it, is, it was given by the Max Born and that we are writing mathematically. So which is indicating as the integral over, it is integral over. So we are indicating as psi psi star integral over, that is psi psi star dx dy dz. So which is from the limits minus infinity up to the plus infinity. So that we are indicating equal to the 1. So here I repeat once again, if the particle is present, that is we are taking mathematically, that is integral over minus infinity to plus infinity, psi psi star dx dy dz equal to 1. This is said to be called normalization. So normalization means we are assuming that at least one particle should be there, one electron should be there in a given space that we are given as the normalization function. So this was given by a scientist called Max Born. This wave function can be considered as a probability amplitude. Since it is used to find the location of the particle. Since it is used to find the location of the particle. So these are the physical significance of the, the wave function. So here, so we will be repeating once again the physical significance of wave function. The wave function psi has no direct physical meaning. So it is a complex quantity representing the variation of the matter waves. It connects the 
particle nature and it and its associated wave nature, the statistical. Then psi psi star or mod psi square, it is a probability density function. Psi psi star dx with dy dz gives the probability of finding the electron in the region of space. And here we are taking if the particle is present, then integral over minus infinity to plus infinity, psi psi star dx dy dz which is equivalent to 1. So that we are indicating as it is said to be called normalization. That is at least one electron should be there in a given space. This was given by the max bomb. The wave function can be considered as a probability amplitude since it is used to find the location of the particle. So this is the physical significance of the wave function based on this physical significance. So we are coming across the next topic. It is a Schrodinger time independent wave equation. This Schrodinger time independent wave equation. So according to the de Broglie theory, we know what is a de Broglie theory. So we are considering a particle of mass m is always associated with a wave. Those wavelength that we are indicating lambda equivalent to h by m wave. So we know h is nothing but Planck's constant. m is said to be called mass of the particle and v is said to be called velocity of this particle. So this is based on the de Broglie theory or de Broglie concept or de Broglie the wavelength that we are indicating lambda equivalent to h by m. <coughs> Now we can consider a system of the stationary waves associated with a particle. Let us consider x, y, z. These are the coordinates of the particle and psi, the displacement for the de Broglie at any time. Psi is said to be called the wave function. Already we have seen that the psi is said to be called the wave function. So here we are considering the, that is, and the x, y, z coordinates for the particle and psi is said to be called the displacement for the de Broglie at any time and the psi is said to be called the wave function. And here we know the classical differential equation, del square psi by dt square equivalent to v square, dou square psi by dou x square dou square psi by dou y square, dou square psi by dou z square. So instead of writing all this, we can write as v square into del square psi. So where del square it is said to be called dou square by dou x square, dou square dou y square, dou square dou z square. Now we are considering the wave function. We are considering a wave function. That is psi of x a equivalent to sin 2 pi by lambda x. We are considering the a wave function psi of x equivalent to a sin 2 pi by lambda x. So here a is said to be called the amplitude and psi is indicating sin it is indicating that is the wave is moving along the that is x axis in the form of a sine function. It is in the moving in the along the x direction, x axis and it is in the form of a sine function. And lambda, we know the lambda. So this lambda is indicating the, the wavelength, de Broglie wavelength. If you are considering any particle, so if you are considering an electron and this electron, it will be consisting of the de Broglie wave equation. That wave equation, it is in the form of a matter waves and each matter wave, so it will be consisting of wavelength that we are indicating as lambda equivalent to the h by m b. It is based on the de Broglie wave equation. I repeat here, so here we are considering that wave function, the psi of x equivalent to a sin 2 pi by lambda x which we are indicating a wave function that is if we are considering a particle 
it will be consisting of the it will be consisting of and wave function will be there and this wave function so which we are indicating mathematically that is a sin 2 pi by lambda x where a is said to be called amplitude and psi is sin is indicating that the wave is moving in the form of sin function and lambda is said to be called the de Broglie wave equation and x is indicating that the wave it is moving along the x axis. Now we are taking the differentiation with respect to the x. So that is we know the differential equation. We are differentiating here dou psi by dou x which is equivalent to so sin if we are differentiating with respect to that is x then we can say it is the differentiation of sin it is said to be called cos and again here we are having the 2 pi by lambda we are having and we are taking as 2 pi by lambda and so here based on the mathematical trigonometric equation we know that if we are differentiating with respect to x then we are getting the dou psi by dou x equivalent to 2 pi by lambda a cos 2 pi by lambda x and again we are differentiating d square psi by dx square so differentiation of the cos function so we know it is a sine function as we are having here in place of x along this x we are having the 2 pi by lambda so it is equivalent to the minus 2 pi by lambda already we are having the 2 pi by lambda so a sin 2 pi by lambda x and the differentiation of this cos function so we will be getting the, the minus sign so this is the minus sign so from these two equations so we are substituting in the, the general equation and we are substitute we are simplifying and before substituting here we are taking as the total energy we are indicating as the capital E the total energy is we are indicating as capital E we know it is a combination of the it is a combination of the potential energy and kinetic energy so here we are indicating as the total the kinetic energy so we know it is total energy E equivalent to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Here we are taking the kinetic energy is equivalent to half mv square and potential energy we are taking as v. So here we are cross multiplying we are taking this value here that is the v value towards the left hand side and we are simply writing half mv square which is equivalent to e minus v. Now so we are rearranging here we are again cross multiplying that is we are taking this two value towards this right hand side and we are getting mv square equivalent to 2 into e minus v or we can say multiplying both sides the m value so we are right we can write as m square v square equivalent to 2m into capital E into v we know that capital E is nothing but the total energy and V is said to be called the potential energy. So here we are simply writing as V square M square V square equivalent to 2M into the total energy E and potential energy. Now we know from the de Broglie equation. So we are having lambda equivalent to lambda equivalent to H by M. So we are squaring on both sides lambda square equivalent to x square by m square v square. So instead of this m square v square we are sub substituting this value. We are substituting in the this equation. So lambda square we can write as h square by 2m into capital E into the v. So here rem reminding you again that is this capital E is nothing but total energy and V is said to be called the potential energy for the particle. Now this lambda square value that we are substituting in our equation. So in this equation 
we are substituting this value. So we are substituting in place of lambda square that we are substituting here h square. So this value will be coming towards the numerator 2m into capital E capital B. So we are simplifying here and we are writing as 8m 8 pi square m by h square e minus v into psi. And so here there is a negative, the minus sign it is there. So this minus sign, so we are taking towards the right hand side and it will become the plus. It will be becoming the, the plus. So at last the resultant equation that we can write as del square psi by del dou square psi by dou x square plus 8m square, say 8 pi square m by h square into e minus v psi equal m to 0. So this equation it is said to be called the Schrodinger time independent wave equation. So here we are considering the, a particle and this particle based on the de Broglie equation. So we have taken as lambda equal m to h by m. And now we are considering a wave function for this particle and we are considering that the psi is a wave function, the wave psi is the displacement for the de Broglie at any given time. And this psi is said to be called the wave function we are indicating. And we are taking the wave function and we are saying that particle is moving in the form of a wave and the psi it is equivalent to psi of x equivalent to we are indicating as a sin 2 pi by lambda x. So we are differentiating here, first order and this is the second order. And now we know based on the, the total energy equation. So we are taking as the capital E equivalent to total energy equivalent to kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So that is we are indicating as half mv square then potential energy v we are writing. From this equation we are cross multiplying and we are rearranging here half mv square kinetic energy equal to capital A into V. And again further simplifying, so we are indicating as m square v square equal to 2m into capital A into V. So based on this de Broglie equation, we are substituting in terms of that is mv and we are indicating as lambda square equal to that is h square by 2m into e minus v. So we are substituting in the equation, we are substituting in the equation and we are simplifying and at last we will be getting the, the Schrodinger time independent wave equation. Dou square psi by dou x square plus 8 pi square m by h square e minus v psi equal to 0. So this is said to be called the Schrodinger time independent wave equation. So this is the topic for this day and thank you for this day. We will be continuing with the another topic in the next class. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.